Hello everyone, welcome back to 20 Minute Marketing. I hope you've enjoyed episodes one through three. Time to move on and get started with episode four where I'll be speaking to Chris Quick from Stage Digital. Um, hi Chris, let's get started with a bit of a background about yourself. Hi Liam, uh, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm the director of Stage Digital uh, and we work with uh, finance, insurance, um, and property um, and, and also marketing brands that um, want to um, yeah, improve marketing in terms of uh, search engine optimization, um, pay-per-click um, advertising, um, but also in the way that they go about it. Um, so not just directly working with an agency, helping them to um, recruit in-house and then sort of upskill um, the, the new team member or, or the existing team. So that sounds really interesting. So instead of just going in there and sort of doing the work for them, you, you get you get them on board and, and help them incorporate like a, a team member or how, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. We do work with um, sort of companies that, that don't want to do it in-house and, and sort of outsource um, their marketing. But we, we've seen sort of a growing trend of companies that do want to um, sort of own their own marketing and that makes a lot of sense. So they, they, they sort of bring it back in-house. But bringing your marketing back in house it um it's not not as simple as that because you have to um make sure that your your staff are, are trained and once you you're trained up that's maybe not enough you still need to um know in in future let's say if if something changes on google or something changes in in terms of mobile or web development um it's it's making sure that that person has the has the skills and and can learn again um, on on how to be sort of very current because obviously we know marketing changes um, all the time. It's uh, definitely an interesting approach to it. I think most agencies overlook sort of that concept. Have you done it like quite a few times, or is it fairly new, or or sort of how how many times have you have you done that? Yeah, so we, over the last um, two or three years, it, it's it's becoming a much bigger sort of part of our business. Um, and I say a lot of companies don't want to do that. They they sort of like the the idea that it's it's, it's done um, outside of of their business, and then have sort of a a, me- a meeting every so often. But com- a lot of companies that we that we work with that we've done this over the last couple of years, um, it it does present sort of um, opportunities. But also they've got to you've got to make sure that you you sort of. Um, or, or we have to fully understand the business we're working with because one, let's say, marketing graduate might fit in really well within one business, um, but culturally might not fit in with, with another business. So, you, yeah, you could, everything changes depending on sort of the business you, that you're working with. Um, but it, it's, um, yeah, it, it's our job to understand exactly sort of who, who the business is and what they're looking for. Absolutely, yeah. That, that You've got to find the right person for the right company. Yeah. Might not necessarily be the most educated or, or qualified, but they've certainly got to fit in to get it right. Yeah, completely. Um, it it really is sort of the, the most important thing. Like you are looking for um, skills on the CV. You are looking for um, previous experience. Maybe not always previous experience in terms of even the role, but you, you're looking for something, um, and then you have to put that into the context of of the company. Um, but that that's the fun bit because. Um, when you interview for a role, it's 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 like the, these particular roles. It's great opportunities for people, um, to see the sort of excitement in the candidates and and um, especially when somebody goes from from our point of view, it's fantastic when like we we recruit for a role, um, someone that that's come out of university, and over a, a one year or a two year period, um, they're having a really thorough sort of um steep learning curve even of, of what marketing actually is and not just from um the theory that they've they've maybe learned at university is is really marketing at the deep end absolutely yeah um i think we've we've sort of covered that concept um so we're just going to move on to um how you think marketing sort of changed and marketing in 2019 <laughs> So marketing in 2019, let's just sort of dive into it and see see what your opinions are. Um, bit of a broad and, and open-ended question, but where would you say marketing is in 2019 and, and sort of where is it heading and where's the focus? Yes, yeah, so if you believe everything you read 
um, sort of in the news and online, then it's, it's, it's clearly lots talking about sort of voice search in terms of SEO. Um, you've got AIs, programmatic, all of these things, and, and it does look as though the future is moving more that way. Um, but nobody can really say for certain. But at the same time, you, you've got to think about like the context of your business within that. So if you're, um, let's say, a plumber, um, or, or, or let's say a small business or something along those lines, like a dry cleaners, I mean, thinking too much about, unless you've got like a, a revolutionary product f- um, for plumbers, then AI is probably not the, the, the place to start. And um, it's probably not going to transform your marketing. Um, so I think, yeah, it's really important not just to think about like the changes to marketing, but how it applies to you as a business, what is your business? Um, and then think about, right, applying the, the marketing for this. So a lot of businesses, Twitter doesn't work for anymore, but it might work for you. LinkedIn, if you're um, a B2, B2B business, then that might be some somewhere to look at. But I think it's so important not to get caught up in the, the trends of what everybody's talking about. Um, if you are a, a tech business and, and you can... Um, sort of this sort of technology is going to revolutionise... Um, your business then that that's fantastic but i think you need to be or people need to be smart about um how it can apply to them and sometimes the tried and tested ways of marketing although they are changing and it might seem like they're becoming um, a bit more archaic it, it might still work for your business yeah absolutely i think you like if you look on any sort of major news platform they'll be talking about all these new ideas like your AI and your virtual reality, et cetera. Um, but they aren't really eff- effective for your smaller businesses. I'm not sure anyone can really dive into it with a with a smaller or like a medium-sized budget. Um, so I still do think like your typical SEO techniques and your Google ads are more effective in terms of what you can do with your time for, for, for most businesses. Yeah, and with, let's say, SEO and AdWords, for example, like, and the one thing that you can be sure of, so the the constant thing is change there. Like that's, that's kind of um, you've got to think about that as well with, with with both sides of it because, let's take something really basic like a title tag. Now that's often changing in how long that can be or something. Google might change something or AdWords or, let's say for example in the news last week that they're, they're taking away average position and now they're going to use something else such as like the search impression. Um, within a position now that's these things are constantly changing and then, then you can be sure of it but at the same time um, as everything changes it's, it kind of stays the same as well because all these changes they're not um, that uh, as a marketer you should be able to get your head around that and it seems like thing, things change and things move and uh, more ad extensions in AdWords ads even Google ads will, will come along Um but yeah, if if you've worked in sort of marketing or Google Ads for a long time, you'll know that yeah, as everything changes, it it, it still stays the same. Yeah, um, it's definitely changed. Um, even in the short time that I've sort of worked in marketing as well, I'm sure you remember the days when it was just blog posts and black hat etc. Just trying to get links. Well, I, I think content is, is is clearly like that's that's. It, it should be something you're doing anyway that if if the the quality of your content isn't there then you're probably not going to rank well um in on google but with that as well like it's important to think about frequency as well because it's if if you're an expert in a subject um and you're writing about a particular topic if if you only publish let's say once or twice a year which a lot of businesses do and they've got these thought leaders in within their business then never publish any content so um, quality, yes, is, is of course important, but you do need to be making sort of a habit of, of publishing content very often. Um, so I, th- I think everybody like almost knows what they need to do now in terms of SEO and, and Google Ads. But what we find is like whether they actually do it or not is another question. Um, we, we do a lot of research into sort of how often com- companies publish content uh, we did we did it recently, sort of in the um, the lettings um, student lettings arena, and in one particular city, the average was sort of uh, published content sort of once a month, which um, is it, it, it's such a huge opportunity there to do it properly, and a lot of companies still aren't doing it. Yeah, I think the key phrase is definitely content is king. Um, 
any sort of regular content and, and your organic search results massively improving and it doesn't even matter if you've got two three hundred characters or a thousand just get your head down and start writing about something interesting that people people might want to read it doesn't even necessarily need to be directly linked to your business it can be something on a broader scope like the local area or some sort of event that's happening that might influence you well within google news um it is is within the algorithm that frequency of content published is a factor now nobody can really say as to, as to how much that is a factor but within within google news you think then it might maybe be, be have some bearing on um the, the normal search algorithm again no one should claim to say anything about that but you can you can sort of know that it, it, it is a factor obviously we know content is um and like like said Liam like you, you should be publishing content often because if you've got two websites, you've got one that never publishes and one that publishes weekly about the industry, um, which one is fresher, which one has, has got something to say? And um, yeah, you, you absolutely should publish content, quality stuff very often. And I think for me as well, it's, it's very rewarding writing content. There's no better feeling than sort of picking a subject and writing a good piece of content on it and then getting it out there and seeing what happens and seeing how much engagement you, you get. It's much more enjoyable than sort of um, the the backside of SEO, which is like checking all, all your statistics and stuff, which are obviously very important. But when you've finished that piece of content that you've planned for the last few days or weeks or whatever, clicking the submit button and getting it live on your blog or your website is, is a great feeling. Well, it's only my opinion, but I think writing is perceived as being quite difficult. Uh, and it can be if you don't write very often, but... I, 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 I personally I think writing is a is a massively under underutilized sort of skill that let's say um graduates sort of many many haven't quite mastered it or are, are a bit scared of it but if you can write well um there's there's so many parts of marketing that where it's transferable so yeah so the ability to 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 write well um should be very high up on like what you want to add to your skill set yeah, and that's not not even just blog posts. It comes down to your Google ads and yeah, uh, and everything. Yeah, everything. Um, I mean, let's say with, with a Google ad, you've probably got only two hundred characters of um, copy. But, but whereas, let's say, a, a report might be a thousand, but it, it's still the ability to write engaging content. And a really good book to talk about there, in fact, that um, thinking about copy thinking about writing and, and just the the ideas really of how you go about it before you even sort of put the pen to paper um it's called art of the click um i think it's by a gentleman called glenn fisher i think it's by him um, but yeah again that's sort of coming from a different perspective of how to write copy for for all sort of mediums um but yeah as you can probably tell i'm, I'm quite a fan of um or, or i think the ability to write is is, is mass- massively underutilized yeah, and just mentioning that, that book and going on that subject, I'm sure that if you went on to Udemy, you'd find a class on, on how to write a blog post or um, just how to improve your writing skills in general. It's definitely a resource that has almost anything you can think of that can help you um, from a business perspective. Yeah, like Udemy is, is great because you've got courses that are like £10 to learn a subject. And um, this this is how the internet has sort of changed everything, where the, the access to learning now um everything's available something like lynda.com or udemy you you can learn a subject to a to a decent level um yeah for, yeah yeah absolutely are there just just like sort of thinking about those resources are there any others that you use regularly for seo that sort of might help people out that they might not know of um so a, a, a tool worth mentioning actually that sort of applies to seo and um, Google Ads as well. It's sort of something like Ruler Analytics, where um, if the phone rings in a business, then you, 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 then you would think a lot of the time, or in the past, that it, it's quite hard to track sort of where that leads come from. But using that particular tool, it can then um, attribute back. Let's say, for example, if the phone rings, you might know it's from a particular keyword that that you're advertising on Google Ads. So it's bringing everything back together, because. You, you absolutely need to know whatever you're spending on marketing. You need to know where where that's going, what it's resulting in in terms of leads, 
and then the actual revenue um it, it's so important so you can if you, if you want further investment from um higher up in the business you, you need to be able to show exactly like what what's generating what um and that's really important and uh, social media that's that's always been the one where it's been a little bit harder for, for people to show um the return on investment but it is there now uh, and i think for every marketing um channel yeah you should be able to report back on it absolutely yeah i think we've we've covered quite a bit of um of content in terms of some tools that you can use and, and where we think marketing's heading and what you should sort of focus on so i think we'll leave it there for for marketing and and the sort of techniques that you need to look at um we're just going to touch on some sort of graduate advice um in a little bit so if you are a recent or a future graduate uh you might want to hang on and just listen to a little bit of advice that we've got for you So we're just going to touch on sort of the graduate role and, and getting out of university and any tips that we have um, in terms of securing your first role or even maybe a second role, depending on, on where you're at in, in sort of your early career. Um, but how, what was sort of your first role, Chris, and how did you acquire that? Um, yeah, so I studied uh, marketing at Sheffield Hallam. Um, oh God, I'm think, trying to think how, when it was. Sort of, yeah, yeah. Um, the best part of 15 years ago now um pr- probably nearer 12 but yeah so, so getting on for 15 years um and the role my, my first role i was actually working um in in marketing but it again like i realized quite quickly that the things i'd learned at university although I, I feel like they've helped me now it wasn't very applicable to the role um so an- another role um i worked in was uh, a company called My Job Group, where they had sort of um, different job boards all around the UK, um, and, and the the marketing worked really well because um, just going into SEO a little bit back in the day, like you could put a particular um, word or phrase in in the, the the domain, and it ranked well. So that was one of the ways that candidates found the job board. Um, but well, that company uh, we looked at the URL, then I, I can't even find it, so I'm not even sure it exists anymore. But um yeah i think to 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 answer your question um i i went into a marketing role um straight away which is which is quite fortunate but i know that's not always the case now for for a lot of um candidates when they leave university they, they in that particular subject not even marketing they might not go straight into it um so one thing there for example like make sure that y- if you are passionate about let's say video or writing and uh, as part of marketing make sure that you're doing some of that before you even leave um because if, if it is a passion then you should really be be working on it and have like a, a portfolio of these things uh, not don't just wait to get into a, a role before you do it um i think that really sets candidates apart yeah i think that sort of answers the question as well about what graduates can try and do to stand out um, you sort of touched upon how like graduates might not start in a marketing in role as well. Um, I can definitely relate to that myself. I worked in banking for a, over a year, just over a year before I started in an actual marketing role. And there's still sort of key skills that you can take out of it. So I don't think anyone needs to really panic if they haven't. Yeah, completely. Yeah. 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 If you haven't acquired a marketing role after six months, three months or whatever your goal is, then there are other industries and sectors where you can gain skills from. I definitely learn a lot of like statistical skills and, and um, customer service and just how sort of business operations runs sort of thing. Um, you can definitely use that to your advantage when you, you're looking. I mean, that, that's a great mindset to have. And if, if let's say you don't get a marketing mall straight out of uni, um, I mean, your career coming out of university, like you probably won't know it at the time, but your career can take many different turns um, for the good. So like, don't don't sort of beat yourself up about it or as long as you're working hard in, in that industry. And I mean, fresh out of university at sort of 21, 22, like you, you've no idea how much of a career is in front of you. So like Liam said, like any, the, the, the industry that you're working in like take it so if you're working in banking or you end up working 
in a in a role that you don't think fits right well take take like the industry you're working in and use what you've learned and maybe disrupt that or like there's it's never a closed path like you can always sort of do something with it um even if you're not in that role yet yeah i think as well like when you go out of university you get in this mindset that you're going to be working for some sort of huge company that everyone recognizes whether it be sports or music or dance or, or anything like that and then you'll find that the companies that are actually hiring and the jobs that are the most exciting are industries that you've never even heard of well as well like it's sort of medium sized but not maybe not always like the big corporate companies but a lot of those companies like they might not be as um open to sort of like investing in people in terms of like what we see as a business with um training a marketing team in house like a lot of the more dynamic smaller businesses they they're really buying into that whereas a a corporate bank they might be quite stuck in the ways about the way that they do their marketing yeah. so yeah like take take the position you're in and, and really make it work for you yeah absolutely and there's there's more of a vested interest for a, a marketing um like a company that only has one or two marketing staff rather than if you if you go to a giant corporate company ultimately it sounds scary but you, you are sort of more easily replaceable they don't have as much commitment to you because they know that they can probably just find yeah. other candidates and there's, there's a sort of like a recycling element well, it's a real cliche, like, but it is true. Like, make sure that uh, you you never stop learning, and and even at the age of twenty one, twenty two, like you you you're gonna have a lot of theory in marketing, but you're probably not gonna have the practical side of it. So you're probably gonna be spending the next ten years at least, um, longer, like learning, right, but becoming or go or if you wanted to get to expert level, whatever that is, um, yeah, you're gonna have to sort of start the learning again, um. I think one thing worth mentioning as well is that when you are applying for jobs, make sure that you, you're doing everything to stand out. Like if you're looking for a role in marketing and then you're sending in a standard CV um, like everybody else, like you need to do better because you work in marketing, you need to market yourself. So whether that be a video or you send in something to a director or somebody that's relevant to the business like you, you just need to think about how you're doing that and um, set yourself apart a little bit yeah even maybe like a, a sort of a paper written cv that's sent in it's how many we, we might have come across yeah. maybe one in the last three months um it'd stand out much more than your typical applicant online so just try and think of different creative ways that that might make you be able to stand out with SEO and, and even AdWords to a point like creativity is important so it yeah creativity is, is a part of um, marketing in 2019 um, so, so re really think about how you can apply that to your your job I think talking about earlier on about how marketing's changed as well things are becoming or certain jobs are becoming more more um, automated so like make the, the creativity part is harder to automate so that really is something that makes your job sort of there's the less chance that a robot's going to be doing it so creativity again like that's that's really something that you should look to uh um sort of harness as much as you can absolutely i agree um i think we're going to wrap it up there we've covered quite a, a lot of information in depth so i just want to say Thank you to Chris for being a guest on the episode. I hope everyone's enjoyed it and at least taken something out of it.